2023 was a big year for the city of Vandalia, as city leaders made some bold moves to capture momentum and better position the city for a brighter future. Through special events, outreach efforts, and a steady determination to continue providing top-tier services, 2023 was a remarkable year. Over the next few minutes, we'll take a look at the accomplishments of the year and peek ahead to what we can expect in 2024. It's the State of the City, 2024. Vandalia City Council is an important component in keeping Vandalia a top-tier suburb. Council sets the tone and guides the city's policies. 2023 saw some changes. Voters re-elected Mayor Richard Herbst and Councilmember Corey M. Follick. We also welcomed two new council members, Amber Avalotis Weaver and Cindy Dugan. The Division of Fire took a big step toward improved service delivery in 2023 with the addition of the rank of fire lieutenant. These positions are each assigned a different shift and handle much of the frontline supervision among firefighters and EMTs. Training continues to be a top priority for the division, with regularly scheduled training a part of every firefighter's routine. In 2023, there were training exercises on ice rescues, rope rescues, confined space rescues, patient extrication, even mass shooting events. This one took place at Skate World and was designed to mimic the confusion and noise associated with an actual shooting emergency. There were some very memorable calls for service in 2023, including a hijacked truck and kidnapping stop on the airport access road that resulted in state troopers shooting both suspects after a tense standoff. One of the calls that got the most attention happened in November, when a truck carrying live cargo overturned on the flyover ramp from I-75 to I-70. For the next couple of hours, firefighters were forced to corral a truckload of little piggies who did not want to go to market, or anywhere else for that matter. The incident gave our crews a chance to hone their pig wrestling skills and gave our Facebook followers plenty of chances to make with the jokes. The Division of Fire rededicated itself to public outreach in 2023, with crews becoming more visible throughout town. The Division's open house was well attended and gave people a chance to tour the station and learn about fire safety. And our crews were spotted at numerous lemonade stands, park events, classrooms, tree lightings, senior dances, stuck cats and trees, and wherever cute little puppies happened to be. In January, the Division of Fire gathered to honor their own members at the annual Fire Awards Ceremony. Firefighter of the Year was Chris Willoughby, EMS Person of the Year was Jake Walters, and Derek Kopp was honored as the Command Staff of the Year. One last note, one of our longest serving firefighters, Captain Mike Pinson, retired after more than 30 years of service to the people of Vandalia. We certainly wish him the best. The Vandalia Division of Police successfully went through the reaccreditation process for another three years through the Commission on Law Enforcement Accreditation. Kalia looks at a police department's overall operation and scores the organization on the strength of its policies, its transparency, its community relationships, and its effectiveness. Of over 850 law enforcement agencies in Ohio, there are just 60 that have achieved the Kalia accreditation. This is a distinction that the Vandalia Police Division has held since 1992. There were some changes within the division as two officers were promoted to the rank of Sergeant. Sergeant Andy Wainer and Sergeant Brian Krim were both sworn into their new positions over the summer. A major change took place in 2023 when Officer Rich Summer was assigned to become the city's crime prevention officer. It's an honor to serve those people. This position works closely with local businesses and local schools, working to help people prevent crime. Officer Summer has been with the Division of Police for more than 23 years. One of the bigger changes for the position? Instead of a stodgy old cruiser, the crime prevention officer drives this sweet Ford pickup. We honored a couple of our officers for a job well done. In May, 
Officers Nelson Clymer and Connor Matlock were the first to respond to an apartment fire. Residents told the pair that a gentleman using oxygen tanks was unconscious inside one of the burning units. At great risk to their own safety, the two officers entered the apartment and pulled the man to safety. They also re-entered to make sure everyone else was out of the building. For their efforts, officers Clymer and Matlock received the Medal of Valor, the highest honor a police officer can receive. There were some major outreach events in 2023. In June, the division hosted its annual open, open house, house giving Justin. residents the chance to tour the station, check out some new technology, and learn how they can play a role in fighting crime. In August, police joined with our Division of Fire to host the National Night Out Against Crime event held at our sports complex. National Night Out is an opportunity for neighbors to come together and talk about crime prevention. In November, police from Vandalia and around the region invited the community to partake in a pizza party at the Vandalia Library. Pizza with Police is an opportunity for people to get to know their police officers in a tasty and low-stress environment. Our officers helped to make the holiday season a little brighter, participating in the popular Shop with a Cop program. Officers from Vandalia and around the region met up with youngsters to take them on a shopping trip, just in time for Christmas. And one last note, earlier this year, the division named the police officer and civilian employee of the year. Officer Holly Estep was honored for her hard work and diligence through the course of the year, and administrative assistant Shannon Green was honored for her work in helping the division successfully navigate the accreditation process. The Public Works Division is one of our city's unsung heroes. The work they do each year keeps our infrastructure in good repair and allows us all to safely and efficiently navigate the city. In 2023, the city began a multi-year project to replace the water meters our residents use in their homes. The old meters came with a battery with a 10-year shelf life. And now, as we've reached the end of that shelf life, crews are working to swap them out for a new meter that will last longer and make it easier for everyone to know exactly how much water is being used. The meter sends an automatic signal to our water department every four hours, giving us usage numbers that are accurate to the drop. Residents can use the Eye on Water app to monitor their own usage. The app also lets you know if there's a leak in your system, so it can be repaired before it becomes a costly mess. By installing the new meters ourselves, we're saving taxpayers more than $800,000 versus paying an outside contractor to do the work. Plans are underway to design and possibly build a new public works facility. In 2023, the city took ownership of a 16-acre parcel after negotiating a land donation valued at $900,000. The new facility will be located just east of the Kroger Plaza on Northwoods Boulevard. The current location doesn't have nearly enough space under roof to protect expensive machinery and vehicles in the fleet from the outside elements. Plans call for the design phase for the new facility to be completed before the end of the year. And in May of 2023, the division opened its doors and invited third graders from Vandalia's three elementary schools to come in and tour the facility. This annual event gives children a better understanding of the many pieces of equipment used to keep Vandalia's infrastructure in good repair. There were some big changes in the Development and Engineering Services Division in 2023. The most obvious was the change in leadership. First, Ben Borton joined the division as the city engineer in April of 23, and then was promoted to Director of Public Service in December. It's a move that has him overseeing a budget of roughly $16 million. With Public Works, Development and Engineering Services, stormwater, and the city's water and wastewater utilities. A Vandalia Butler High School graduate, Horton is a professional engineer with a degree from the University of Dayton. Vandalia's wastewater system is set to receive significant upgrades over the next few years. The city jointly owns Tri-Cities Wastewater Authority with Tip City and Huber Heights. Built in 1985, the plan has been notified that new tougher restrictions and phosphorus and ammonia discharges will go into effect in 2027. This plant 
is not capable of meeting the new Environmental Protection Agency limits and is currently operating at its maximum designed flow capacity of 11.2 million gallons per day. That number must be increased to over 17 million gallons per day to meet anticipated demand. The system also experiences an unacceptable number of sanitary sewer overflows during wet weather events, events in which the lines are full and the sewer cannot contain the wastewater. The Ohio EPA has issued a notice of violation with orders to fix the problem. This problem will be resolved by constructing equalization tanks and some 8,000 feet of additional sewer line. Two such tanks have been built in Tip City with two more planned for the area near the Taylorsville Metro Park. These fixes will be successful, but also expensive. We've received hundreds of thousands of dollars in state and federal funds to help offset these costs, but increased water and sewer rates are also necessary to fund these required system upgrades now and moving forward. A project bringing city water to residents and businesses west of Airport Access Road should wrap up by the end of this year. The project will allow addresses between the western city limits and Airport Access Road to move off of wells and septic tanks and onto a more reliable city water and sewer system. And we recently received word that the city is receiving a $1.3 million grant from the state of Ohio to pay some of the costs associated with replacing this bridge on Johnson Station Road, just off of Little York Road. A few weeks ago, the news got even better, as the Ohio Department of Transportation awarded a $200,000 grant to help offset engineering costs for the project. The bottom line is this project will cost $1.64 million to get done, and other sources will foot 94% of that bill. It's been a year of big moves for our Parks and Recreation Department. First, the City Council adopted the 2023 Parks and Recreation Master Plan after nearly a year of strategic planning with the community. The City also unveiled two brand new state-of-the-art playgrounds in 2023 with plans for another renovated play area in 2024. The playground at Helke Park was the first to be unveiled with the official ribbon cutting in September. This playground has all the climbing, spinning, and swinging features you'd expect in a playground, but also some you may not expect. We work with an advisory committee, residents, the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Miami Valley Down Syndrome Association to help make sure the playground is accessible to kids with many different abilities. There are tactile features and a communication board all designed to make sure as many differently abled children as possible get the chance to play. In October, we did it all again, this time at the Vandalia Sports <laughs> Complex. One, two, three! And while the features may look a little different, the Sports Complex playground was also designed with inclusivity in mind, so kids who have trouble communicating or who use a wheelchair can still enjoy this playground. Both units were funded primarily through the American Rescue Plan Act, with additional funding from a Montgomery County Community Development Block Grant. This year, Robinette Park will get a similar treatment with a brand new playground. The final design is still being worked out, but you can rest assured it will be spectacular. Also a part of the Robinette project is a restroom facility. Crews have already begun construction on the restroom, with the building expected to be completed by the end of the year. The restroom facility will be wheelchair accessible, include an adult-sized changing table, and plumbing for a pump house to accommodate a splash pad in the coming years. Another part getting attention this year is the Vandalia Art Park, which has very quickly become a favorite destination among locals. This year, the city will build out the stage, including a permanent cover and an expansion of the seating at the Art Park Amphitheater. This will allow performers to play on even when the weather turns wet. The city also plans to begin hosting outdoor fitness classes at this facility. Vandalia's finance department was recognized just last month for excellence in financial reporting. Joe Braden from State Auditor Keith Faber's office presented the department 
with the Auditor of State Award with distinction for maintaining a high level of transparency while maintaining the financial records for the city. The department also handles the financial reporting for the Tri-Cities Wastewater Authority and for the Northern Area Water Authority. Both of those reports were also honored with the award. If you're keeping track, this is the 33rd year in a row the department has received this prestigious honor. This time of the year is a busy one for our tax department, which is steadily processing tax returns as they trickle into the office. In the next month or so, that trickle will become a steady stream and then a tsunami of returns the closer we get to the April 15th deadline. Something new this year is an improved interface for filing taxes online. The new tax app makes it easier to upload documents, file, and even pay outstanding balances from your favorite mobile device. 2023 wrapped up with some big changes in the city manager's office. Assistant City Manager Amber Holloway moved on to accept the city manager position in West Carrollton, and Public Service Director Rob Cron was appointed the city's new assistant city manager. Rob has been with the city of Vandalia for more than 30 years, and he has certainly hit the ground running with several big projects. The city contracted with Place Dynamics to conduct a market study in the job creation and revitalization area. The purpose of the study is to determine the strategic actions that the city and business owners can take to promote the right combination of residential, commercial, retail, and restaurant development in the city center. The final details and plan recommendations are currently under review. A major project that wrapped up just last month is the creation of a comprehensive facility plan. This project took a holistic approach to planning the capital needs of the city buildings and mechanicals for the next 20 years. In recent years, the city manager's office has worked with the Vandalia City Council to grow the organization's capital planning and forecasting capabilities, to model and to include potential future debt service payments for transformative projects in the annual budget forecast, and to stretch taxpayer dollars by lobbying for external funding. This strategic roadmap resulted in a continuing surplus budget, with the city securing over $4.3 million in external funding in 2023 and nearly $7.4 million anticipated or secured already in 2024. The city continues to make progress in its efforts to reduce large commercial truck traffic through the heart of the city. We've used a multidisciplinary approach to tackle the issue and expect to continue to see a decline in the number of big trucks navigating our local roadways. We've seen a decrease in trucks using National Road since we adjusted speed limits to increase the truck's estimated travel time on National Road. Truckers are learning they can get to points west of town a little faster using the access road. We're inching closer to the creation of a ring road that will connect those large warehouse facilities west of town around the back of the airport to use Northwoods Boulevard to access the interstate, with a build-out anticipated for 2027. Trucks utilizing Carter Express and other facilities within Stone Quarry Crossings are learning there is only one route to the interstate, and that's Airport Access Road. No right turn signs greet the truckers as they pull onto Peters Pike, and no right turn signs are in place at Peters and National, steering that traffic away from the city center and back onto the highway. And we continue to make large commercial vehicle traffic enforcement a priority for our division of police. Every uniformed officer receives commercial vehicle training and spends some time during the month enforcing the city's commercial truck traffic laws. And our final note is a chance to congratulate our city manager, Dan Wendt. In 2023, Dan earned the distinction of credentialed manager through the International City-County Management Association. Of the 2,322 cities, villages, townships, and counties in Ohio, there are just 28 active local government managers who hold this credential. Finally, Dan was honored by the Vandalia Butler Chamber of Commerce when he was named the 2023 Business Professional of the Year. Vandalia, Ohio is a small city with big opportunities. Every day, 
we are working to overcome modern challenges and lingering hurdles to meet the needs of our community. In 2024, we look forward to continuing our efforts to build on our tradition of being a top-tier suburb through top-tier city services.